an academic setting. What this game does, it actually primes uh, the student's reaction time. So what will happen, they will be presented with an audio sound stimulus as well as a visual stimulus. Um, and the student is to react. And so what it will do is increase a child's response time um, if it's done in a systematic way. And it's something that we did uh, with Diego over the summer during a direct assistance project that we held uh, through the Center for Autism and Related Disabilities. So Diego's gonna demonstrate exactly how to do three kick. It's very fun, it spikes the heart rate, and uh, he enjoys it. So he's an expert on it, so I'm gonna let Diego demonstrate exactly how to do three kick. That's a great job. With all that going on, I'm tired just from watching you. How do you feel? Good. You feel good? Yeah. You feel like you can go for another two minutes? Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Definitely? Yeah. All right. Well, Diego, we thank you for demonstrating exactly how to do three kick. As I said, with three kick, it helps students like Diego increase their response time. If we're talking about academics, if we're talking about um, following instructions in the home environment. This type of interactive game serves multi-purposes. It allows the student to have fun in a fun environment, as well as work on, on uh, response time, which is another area that a lot of our students with autism are impacted by. So we're here at the, at the gaming lab, still outlining and talking about the, the interactive circuit that we just had the kids go through. Mm -hmm. And to the untrained eye, it looks very novice, but we're actually teaching academic social skills as well. We're teaching kids um, color recognition, motor planning, and sequence, and all things that kids need to be successful in a variety of different um, environments. Um, how would you explain or articulate um, Grant's experience and some of the things that you see him gaining from an experience like this? Well, from a um, diabetic perspective, it's certainly helping to balance his blood sugar. Um, it's also because of that motor planning, that's physical therapy, occupational therapy. And then from those two things, once he's able to sequence his brain, the language impairment that he has actually is he's able to communicate more mm -hmm. um, because, he's, because the brain is organized, the blood sugar is balanced. So he's certainly able to accomplish more in that day mm -hmm. because of what is being provided here. Diego, you and Grant look like you were having the best time. You were working out and staying fit at the same time. Uh, yes, we were. Um, well, tell me this. What is your favorite sport? What's your favorite game and sport? What, well, my favorite sport is soccer because uh, you get to like, they hit the ball with, uh, with uh, a lot of people, and like, I really like the challenge. 
you have a lot of cardiovascular, you know, you have a lot, a lot of endurance whenever you play soccer. And do you ever get out of breath, tell the truth, because I do. Yes, I tell yeah. the truth. <laughs> and uh, Melody, which is Diego's mom, what are, what ha what's been the best programs you found out there in the community sports-wise? Well, honestly, when he was younger, we were unable to find many community-based sports programs um, that could meet his needs or being a single mother, being on a, a budget, mm -hmm. there wasn't a whole lot out there for us. So we generally just scheduled play dates with neighborhood children, a lot of swimming pool, playground activities. Well, and you know, I say that's the way we grew up. You know, we mm -hmm. kicked a can and we're happy, right. and now we've got to drive them everywhere to keep right. them come. But we know how important that is. So yeah. <laughs> we do. Mm -hmm. So, well, what is the best way CARD helped you guys with that? Well, they were able to give us a lot of referrals to, you know, different places and therapists and just having them, you know, to give us ideas on how to handle certain issues or problems that we were having at the time. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So, Diego, what is the position you play? Um, Are you a goalie or do you, is it a goalie in soccer? Uh, I usually like being be on the offensive. Okay. You kicking the ball. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And what else, if you could play anything in the world, what would it be? Well, well, if there's anything I could play in the world, it would be uh, the, the, the kicking box, the kickboxing machine. Three uh -huh. kick. Yeah, three kick. Now, do you teach that? Mm -hmm. Oh, do you see? Yeah. I knew there was a method of this madness. Do you love PE at school? Oh, uh, yes. And what thing is your favorite? What I love uh, when we play something called Foursquare. What do, what's your favorite activity at PE? Uh, my favorite activity at PE is a uh, like dodgeball when people throw these like rubber balls at you because uh, uh, you need good dodging strategies to dodge the ball. And uh, also, like, capture the GIA because uh, there are like, two GIAs per team, and, uh, and uh, just like dodgeball, you put you throw these soft balls at the GIA, and uh, you need to get both of them out in order to win. Oh, that's, that's what you need to go videotape. I do. You do. <laughs> how is, uh, Melody, how is his health and, and his fitness level? How is that? Uh, Diego doesn't have any real health concerns mm -hmm. other than some feeding issues. Uh, that cause him to eat certain foods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, that's all of us too, mm -hmm. not just young people. Um, where can, Shelton, where can families go to find more help? Um, the Center for Autism is an excellent starting point um, okay. to get some direction. Um, there's a lot of family resource centers here in um, throughout our catchment area. Um, the YMCAs are excellent mm -hmm. starting points. Wonderful. Many of them have special programs in which they can consult um, with the Center for Autism to help and add any additional supports that might be needed. So um, CARD is an excellent starting point for a lot of the service providers and, and youth programs um, in the community. What is your best advice for families just starting on their journey? Really to understand that um, change doesn't happen overnight. Mm, it is that. a a, a continuous process. Um, I've known uh, Diego since he was 18 months awesome. old and wow. he's continuing to grow and change um, every year. Every time I meet him he's he almost is eye level with me now and I remember <laughs> him when he was just a baby. And so I would have to say uh, change just begin to adapt a, a, a perspective that change doesn't happen overnight and, and that um, you know progress will, will happen, but it will happen along a, um, a bit slower continuum. Um, and you gain the confidence as you go, mm -hmm. as you go each little step too. Each little helps. step, because you, you're continuously learning as well, learning skills, I'm sure. Uh, Melody probably sells herself a bit short in terms of what she's learned um, and been able to implement with Diego, which you know has kind of contributed to some of the success that he's experienced. Um, um, she's learned a lot of the evidence-based practice strategies that CARD uh, promotes and teaches its constituents, and has been able to effectively integrate it into um, 
their family's lifestyle mm. um, and not making it additional work. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a part of the way she mm -hmm. runs her family. And so um, it, it really makes for a, success, for a successful uh, situation and a successful environment wherever Diego is. Love it, love it. So what would you say to moms out there and dads and grandparents? What, if you could tell them one or two things, what would it be? Your efforts are basically everything that you put into it. Well, I want to thank you all for being part of making our whole community autism friendly.